Good morning, everyone. Welcome to ShortSellPowerHour.com. My name is Fred Weaver. Um, I've replaced my partner, Kevin Kaufman, with uh, the coach over here. Coach Collard, welcome back to the show. Right good on, to thank you. you. Good to be good here. Good to see you twice this week already. Right on. I love it, man. I love it. Well, hey, um, we've been talking for the last few weeks around the first 30 days, and um, I'm just going to be honest. There's a lot of people out there that uh, I think are getting a little sick of this topic, mm -hmm. but I believe that you know as well as I do how important the first 30 days is. Short sales are one or lost in the first 30 days. Absolutely. There's just no way you can expect to keep a buyer in a transaction five and six months, guys. It's just not going to happen very I agree often. agree 100%. And that's where the first 30 days, getting stuff done as quickly as possible, and by quickly I mean verifying the package, getting a BPO, a value on file for the bank, and then making sure that it gets to the next person who's going to submit it for approval. That's really not that much to ask. Sure. I mean, that stuff could well, really be done in three days if we actually had a system in place and we ran the bank. But it's really an story. expectation for accountability that you guys work within to hold the banks accountable to action. Correct. You know, it's easy to um, allow somebody to treat you with the way the, the way you let them treat you, and they'll they'll start doing it more and more. So if they know you don't care about your file, they'll push you back. No, absolutely. But if they get context of you, Group Forty Six Ten. Yeah. Early on in the transaction, hey, these guys are serious. These yeah. guys are going to be on me. They're going to escalate. I better move this file. You know what? I want to give some context before we even get into the pre-escalation that I said yesterday. I talk about. I don't think we've ever shared this on Short Sell Power Hour, and so I'm not. And if, if we did, it deserves to be noted again. Um, You've got to understand, guys, due to some of the research and conversations that we've had with people inside the bank, I'll give you an example of like GMAC or Homecomings Bank. We've had conversations with people within the last three to six months inside the bank. They've got as many as 600 up to 900 or maybe even 1,000 plus files that they're assigned to at one given time. Think about those numbers, Mark. You've got one, got negotiator, with <laughs> one negotiator inside a bank that has hundreds of files, 600 up to a thousand files at any given time. I'd quit my job and smoke crack. It's insane guys, like I think that we really need to hit that home today. The reason we're talking about the first 30 days being so important is you've got to understand they're getting literally 50 to 100 new files that are coming into their pipeline on, an, on a monthly basis and they're not spitting out more than 20. Let me put it in context for those of you that have a short sell team uh, or uh, just a regular listing team and you have 60 listings and you're working those and you have a transaction coordinator handling 60 files, multiply that times 14 and understand how oh, completely overwhelmed you get. It's crazy. It's and not gonna happen. Really what the first 30 days is about is, is literally just doing this. I mean, in a there's a way and a manner to do it. I'm not suggesting that we just scream all the time to get the attention, sure. but you've gotta let the person inside the bank and that person's supervisor and the manager and the AVP of that department and the vice president and the senior vice president and the executive vice president and the CFO himself of that bank know you expect to get your short sale file approved in 90 days. You're not gonna to conform to their policies and procedures of, well, well let's just wait in line behind the other rate. 799 and right. we'll spit you out an approval in a year. Right, like ALS does. To you sometimes, I'm sorry, we don't even engage and sign a coordinator for 60 days. What a load of crap! Yeah, it, it's just the Hebrew you, sense. Of you can't handle that stuff, guys. So, this is where pre escalation comes in. Pre escalation, I'm gonna give you an example of say city mortgage, for example. I'm not picking on city, I'm just giving you some insight into what I believe their system is based on my experience. Certainly, right. it could be different based on you know where city, what which city mortgage you're working with. You've got some in Ohio, you've got some in Arizona, you've got you, you got know, you've some got, on one, two, three Flower Street in Mesa, whatever. You've got different departments inside city, but my experience with city has been that they assign what they call a setup person, yep. okay, and that that setup person confirms the package and they order the BPO, right. and then when everything's complete, meaning Meaning all the documents are updated, everything looks complete, they have a BPO on file, then they assign it over to the closer. Well, great if you can get the setup person to order the BPO and do all that in a timely manner and get it over to the closer, fantastic. But by pre-escalation, when I find out who that setup person is, and I find that out by playing detective and asking the right questions on the phone. Which you start day one and do Which I start day one, we've been talking about that. Yep. I'm gonna ask who that person, who my setup person reports to. Mm -hmm. Pre-escalation, before I even need to know who my phase one or my setup person's manager is, I'm gonna ask for the information. Certainly. Why would I want, not wanna have that in my file? <laughs> would, might it be helpful that if I am gonna run into a problem in a couple weeks because the BPO's not back or wasn't ordered properly, then it might be helpful to have the supervisor to put as a CC on an email that I'm sending, or to reference that, hey, I'm sorry, Sarah, if you can't handle my file, Miss Phase One Setup Negotiator, maybe I should talk to Jim, your boss. Yeah. 
And, and, and I'm not saying it just to threaten people. I'm saying it because I know in the corporate culture that if you got a bigger title, you can get more done. Yeah. They don't give the people at the bottom level, the, the lower level, that much authority. They Absolutely. just don't. Absolutely. So you need to have the people's names with authority. So pre-escalation means asking when you're on the phone and you find out that Sarah is your phase one negotiator, who's Sarah's boss? And don't stop there. Who's Jim's boss? Oh, that's great. Who's Dave's boss? And you just keep going until they say, I can't give you that information. And even when they say that, you challenge them. You say, oh, I'm sure you can. Let me talk to your manager. I've gotten as many as five people's information on my first phone call in the first 30 days. I've gotten the negotiator. I've gotten the supervisor, the manager, the ADP, and the vice president on one phone call. Do you hear that? Guys, slow down for a second just to put it in context of business. Not that he's just the best salesman in the world, but he's no. pretty good. He's following a model called E to P from the Red Book, and it's just breaking a standard ceiling of achievement. When he runs out of personality and can't influence anybody, the automatic, consistent, and effective nature of always pre-escalating is going to build into his program consistency yeah. to get those names over time even if he can't do it on one phone call. Very important. The same way that I will not advance in a file if I don't have the BPO value is the same way I won't advance in the file if I don't know who the negotiator supervisor is because I may leave messages and send emails that don't get returned. I need to know somebody else's name. So we're going to talk more about escalation. I mean that's that's really what all of you guys need to know yeah. uh, is how to More do that properly, how to get your file approved, and we'll go into that over the next months and year and everything else. But if you can understand the concept of pre-escalation, getting the information before you need it, you'll be on a path where you don't actually have to get into a freak out, frantic attack because you know your sale date's tomorrow and the sale date hasn't been postponed. You'll just have three managers' names in your file who your negotiator reports to and you'll just call all of them and email all of them and your situation will be handled. So, exactly. All right, we're going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you got some out of that episode. We slowed down today to give you a lot of content right there in one episode. Um, and let's end it like we always do, Coach. One, two, three. Short sale power hour. Short sale power hour. Crush it.